Everyone in my life has chosen the last 15 or so minutes to text me. Hey everybody, welcome to another living room edition of Baseball Night in New York. It's brought to you by your Tri-State Cadillac dealers, Doug Williams alongside Anthony Recker, Todd Zeal, Andy Martino. If you're watching at 6 o'clock, part of our digital web audience, welcome, happy to have you. If you're watching us on television at 11 o'clock, we're very happy to have you as well. Um, it was funny watching our first show. We're in sweatpants, we're in our living rooms, and we're on TV. And that, by the way, is a testament to the hard work that goes on behind the scenes. As Andy tweeted out a couple of days ago, all we do is talk for a couple of minutes and then we go away. Um, the people who edit this, produce this, they're making this thing work. So we really appreciate all of their hard work. Andy, are you raising shout your hand out. for some I reason? I just like to, no, I just want to, shouting out all the people that do hard work, of course, but I wanted to add some of us are professional to wear jeans when we're uh, doing this. I don't. Oh, you, got, wait, you guys are wearing pants? You guys, pants? you guys you guys have pants on right now? I didn't know that, that was That does make you, do. yeah, that makes you better than me, for sure. Just That's not what seven, makes me better than 7 you. It's 7 a.m. It's 7 a.m. for me, so uh, the jeans have not reached the, uh, the body yet, yeah. Todd revealing the state. We'll leave it there. We'll leave it there, yeah. I'm so sorry, everybody. Um, okay, so we're going to begin. We're going to begin tonight's show talking David Wright, looking back on his career. Um, and, and Todd, you were there when he first came up. What sense did you get when when you first met him? When you first started to be introduced to the player that he was? Did you know early on that he was going to be special? Yeah, I did. Um, and I think I had a little bit of a head start because David was represented by uh, the same agents that I was represented. So I had heard a little bit about him prior to meeting him in spring training and then really got to watch him over the course of, uh, of that spring in, in 2004. Um, could see some, you know, just some great tools, obviously. He had great power straight away, great balance at, at home plate. Um, was more agile on his feet at third base than I expected him to be. Uh, but was just, you know, one of those, Kids that you see looks different in spring training. He had a, a, a good spring. He hit the ball hard. Um, but you could just see that there was something about him that when he got his opportunity, he wasn't going to be intimidated by it. And um, I always felt like he was going to be a, a high-quality player at the big league level. Um, Anthony, in your opinion, player to player, what made him so special? Take, you know, take out of consideration the leadership qualities, the man that he was. Um, what made his skill set special? I think it was just his work ethic and his competitiveness, even off the field, and then how it transferred onto the field. Um, the way he was able to make everything kind of fun, you know, whether it was in the clubhouse. So there was working out. I remember in 2015 getting there early, and we were starting like kind of a new workout program, uh, you know, down there in Florida. And and just him being there every day with us, and and us all working out, and him getting everybody kind of going. And I mean, I specifically remember we were competing at certain like you know, like little activities, fun, uh, you know, agilities and stuff. And he would just, he would just call you out right away. All right, Rec, let's go. I'm going I'm to beat you right here. And it just things like that. Like, I mean, he had that big brother mentality. He's got a few brothers, you know, so it's a guy who's been competitive his whole life. And he brought that into the clubhouse and that transferred onto the field. That's what made him and, and gave him that edge that made him that great player. Andy, you've covered a lot of professional baseball players in your career. Um, and when David retired, um, you wrote about some of the emotions that you experienced when he finally called it quits. And I, I, I think it's interesting um, what it was about David Wright in particular that led to that emotional reaction from you. You can make me cry, Doug. It was, it was a tough night. No, look, actually, sitting in this very same living room about five feet over to my right, I, I had uh, covered uh, – David had taken BP on the field the weekend before his final game. It's like the final step toward getting back. I had just been in Vegas with him covering his rehab uh, to re return and connected with him there and was just sitting in this very living room and started telling my wife about it and actually did start to cry, which was the first time I've ever done that as an adult covering baseball about anything. You actually argue with some professional, it's supposed to be objective, but there's something about a uh, right, look, it's a little bit personal because his career mirrored my own in a lot of ways I covered and for me, he was young, all the way to his retirement, so it made me feel old. But the part that wasn't about myself, I think, was about how this was somebody who uh, 
was as easy to root for as anyone who I've ever met in the game. I, I, I missed seeing him play third base for the Mets. It just felt so right. Uh, seeing him in that position for that team that he rooted for as a kid, representing it as well as anybody could have represented it. I think he had a very successful career. He played in the World Series. He made a ton of money. The end of his career was not a tragedy uh, by any stretch. He was one of the winners in this game. But it was still poignant to see it taken away from him a little bit before his time. And I think it was poignant for us as observers, whether you got, we've got two former teammates here on the show, a writer, uh, if you're a fan, none of us got to see this great guy play anymore. And that, and that struck me and it was emotional. And I know I'm not the only one who was emotional uh, through that final week of his career. By the way, really admirable restraint by Anthony Recker, who almost interrupted Andy to say, pun intended, when you said it just felt so right, Andy, when he was uh, at third base for the Mets. <laughs> you would have completely it, ruined my flow. I was in the zone, yeah, exactly. man. I was so emotional. glad you that It was a back. really thought out point, and Thank Anthony you. just went, you know, it was just a brief moment. Um, <laughs> I, I think it's so interesting to examine w the derailment of the career because, as Andy mentioned, in some ways it's tragic, in some ways it's not, obviously. In no ways is it tragic. I'm sorry, but I, I, I don't mean to derail the well, point. Well, you cried. He's a winner. Yeah, but anyway, I, just, I get sensitive <laughs> about this point that anybody thinks that there's anything sad about David Wright's career. He's a winner. He knows it. But okay, so sorry. let's ask the two former teammates. I mean, Todd, like I said in my first question to you, you saw him at the very beginning. So that skill set that he had, um, injuries did derail what could very well have been a Hall of Fame career. And he's still in that discussion because the numbers are so good. And for so many years, he was um, the best, best position player, such a solid production every year. But it really did, um, the injuries, uh, derail what could have been more. Yeah, absolutely. It did. Um, and and I, I'm with Andy on this where, um, look, guys' career numbers waned for different types of reasons. His was sort of like a meteor rising and then it leveled out and burned out. And um, when, you, when you talk about his career numbers, like the irony of it is that he's going to go down as one of the all-time Mets in Mets history. You see his numbers and where he ranks in Mets history. But as a compiled um, career set, you know, there's guys like Robin Ventura or myself that have more hits, more home runs, more RBIs than David over the course of a career. But he was identified as a, as a New York Met for his entire career. He had one place that he uh, identified himself, and he absolutely did the best of his ability to really embrace the city, embrace the fans be a leader. He wasn't named captain for, um, for no reason. And because of all those things that I think were um, really beyond just what he did on the field, I think his legacy in New York as a Met is going to rank among the top guys that ever put on a uniform. Yeah, for me, I mean, I wouldn't say that his career got derailed um, just because he still is considered, in my opinion, and we'll get to this later, the best Mets position player of all time. Um, and it's, it's hard to argue against that, uh, you know, just because of the duration of, of his career, how long he was there. He was only a Met, um, you know, and, and the ability he had when he was on the field. Uh, you look at some of the numbers he had, his career numbers. It's, it's actually, you know, I remember getting there in 13 and being with that team and, and seeing him, you know, go about his business and, and thinking to myself, man, this guy's pretty good. I mean, obviously, I knew he was a really good baseball player, but watching him go through everything he was doing. And then I actually took the time to look back at some of his statistics from his first few years. And I was actually surprised because I was playing minor league ball. I didn't always watch everything and know everything that was going on then. Um, you know, but to see some of his statistics, they were eye opening. I said, wow, this guy's not just good. He's, I mean, he's elite. He's one of the best players in the game by far. Um, and that first year in City Field kind of destroyed some of his numbers in and of itself. But then the injuries came up and, and that definitely hurt him a little bit. But, you know, I wouldn't say it derailed his career by any means. Quickly, Todd, Anthony, uh, Andy, you guys agree best Mets position player of all time? Uh, I strongly disagree. I think that's Carlos Beltran, but I love David. I, I don't know that I would say he's the best, but I think he's right among the top three. And can I just say that, Todd, uh, earlier, did you say uh, that I've got more hits, but uh, David gets more credit? Did I hear that come out of your I mouth? didn't hear that, but... Uh... <laughs> Guys, fascinating conversation about the captain, David Wright. Thank you, Anthony, Todd, Andy. Appreciate it.